Hi, I'm Annie Fitzsimmons. I'm your Washington Realtors Legal Hotline lawyer. And today marks the beginning of a new mini series inside of our larger series. The larger series being entitled Real Estate Fundamentals You Should Know. This little mini series covers Form 22B, the Home Sale Contingency. When I teach this form in class, I always start out by saying, and this is not an exaggeration, this is the singularly most complicated form in the entire statewide form system. And if you are not familiar with use of this form, do not rely only on the information you're going to get from this video. You have got to get help in using this form. Do not use this form alone, at least not for the first time. It's not surprising that this form is extremely complicated. There's really no way to simplify it because this form merges together two transactions and creates a, a, an umbrella effect, if you will, or a bridge between those two transactions through this one form. So it's a complicated form because you've got lots of moving parts and you've got more than just two parties, you've actually got three and sometimes more than three parties involved in everything that happens within the terms of this home sale contingency. So that's the background warning about using Form 22B. Let's talk about how you actually use Form 22B. This discussion is probably going to take three videos. And in this video, what I wanna focus on is the buyer who satisfies the home sale contingency. In the next video, we're gonna talk about the buyer who waives the home sale contingency. And then in the third video, we're gonna troubleshoot, troubleshoot some issues that often come up with use of the form. In most contingencies in the statewide form system, you don't really have to worry too much about the difference between satisfaction versus waiver. In this, with respect to this contingency addendum, you have to, you absolutely have to understand the difference between a buyer who satisfies the home sale contingency and a buyer who waives the home sale contingency. So how does a buyer satisfy the home sale contingency and what does that mean? First of all, let's talk about what the home sale contingency does. The home sale contingency says from buyer to seller, seller, I really wanna buy your house, but I've got this other piece of property that I have to sell before I can purchase your property. And I don't have any offers pending on this property right now. I've got to go find a buyer and then I've got to close the transaction with that buyer before I can close the purchase of your property. And seller says, okay. Within Form 22B, buyer makes a promise to seller that with, within five days following mutual acceptance, buyer will list buyers property for sale. The form requires buyer to list within five days. It doesn't require who the listing agree, who, I'm sorry, who the listing broker has to be for buyer's property. It simply says that buyer must list the property within the MLS in the area where the property is located. Okay, so buyer's got five days to get the property in the MLS. Buyer gets, it, gets the property listed. The paragraph, the first paragraph of Form 22B requires the buyer and seller to agree on the number of days, there's a blank space for the number of days that the contingency, the home sale contingency will persist. Let's say the parties write 60 days into that provision. Now buyer has 60 days to acquire a buyer for, for buyer's property. Doesn't mean that they have 60 days to get the buyer and close the transaction. It means that they have 60 days to get a buyer. So listing broker, if your seller is unwilling to, to keep the property tied up with a home sale contingency buyer that long, then that very first paragraph is where you want to narrow the number of days available for the home sale contingency. If seller's only willing to give this home sale contingent buyer 30 days to sell their property, then you would write 30 days into that provision recognizing that if buyer gets their home sold on the 30th day, they would then have additional time available to them to actually get that transaction closed, okay? So buyer gets their home listed. Uh, let's, let's just say this buyer has 30 days to get their home sold. It's a 30-day contingency. 
Buyer also, when you're filling out the form, buyer and seller have the opportunity to negotiate whether or not buyer will make loan application at the time of mutual, well, assuming that there's a Form 22A, a financing contingency in the transaction, remember that buyer has five days based on the Form 22A from the date of mutual acceptance to make loan application. Using the Form 22B, the parties can negotiate that buyer's five-day time period will either begin from the date of mutual acceptance or from the date that buyer gives seller notice that buyer has sold their home sale contingent property in order to make loan application. Buyer and seller, you can negotiate that provision. My recommendation is that you leave that time period at the time of mutual acceptance. Buyer, go ahead and make your loan application. Get that process started because most lenders require a little more time than you think that they're gonna take. So get that process started. If you wanna to wait to order your appraisal, then wait to order your appraisal, but get your loan application started. What you don't have the ability to negotiate, and buyer brokers, pay attention to this, you do not have the ability to negotiate the time period for buyer's home inspection contingency. The home inspection contingency is typically controlled by Form 35, Form 35 says that buyer has, by default, if you use a default terminology, 10 days from the date of mutual acceptance. Nothing in Form 22B allows you to renegotiate the start time for buyer's inspection contingency. So buyer and seller enter a purchase and sale agreement with a Form 22B, buyer has five days to get their home listed. On the MLS, they have five days to make their loan application unless they've changed that provision. And buyer, you have that first 10 days if that's the number of days in your inspection contingency to get your inspection done as well. Now, why can't buyers alter the number or, or the start time for their inspection contingency? Think through this for a minute. Buyers got seller's property tied up with this home sale contingency. Now, yes, seller can continue to market the property, but, but, but marketing of the property is hampered by the fact that this home sale contingency buyer exists and any other buyer is gonna have to work through the process of bumping this buyer. So it, it disables sellers listing somewhat to have a home sale contingency buyer. So buyers, I'm sorry, sellers marketing efforts are hampered by this home sale contingency buyer being in place. If buyer doesn't do their inspection now, but saves it for later, let's say that buyer takes their 30 days, finally gets a buyer, gives notice that they've got a buyer, then they do the, the inspection of seller's property and they discover something about seller's property they can't live with and they terminate the agreement for the purchase of seller's property. What a waste of time. What a waste of time for everybody. Now buyers got their home sold to somebody else and they don't have a place to go because they don't wanna buy seller's house. Sellers wasted all of this time having the, bump bump, having the home sale contingency buyer tied up on the purchase of seller's property when that buyer didn't really want the property in the first place. So it, it, the boilerplate forms don't allow buyer to put off doing their home inspection and you should not create a provision that would allow the buyer to put off doing their home inspection. Buyer, if you're, if you're a home sale contingent buyer and you also want a home inspection, go do your home sale, I'm sorry, go do your inspection of seller's property up front. All right. Got all that background stuff out of the way. Now buyers just trucking along trying to find a buyer for their property. Yay, they get a buyer. Things get complicated here. We have to keep the transaction organized in order to understand the next provision that we come to. In this situation, we have our original seller and we have the buyer who's purchasing from that seller. And then we have buyer's buyer over here. Because remember, we have two different transactions. We have the first transaction, the home sale contingency transaction, and then we have the transaction for the sale of buyer's property. The Form 22B says that when the buyer sells their property to the buyer's buyer, there are two requirements for that transaction that can only be changed with seller's permission. Here's the two requirements. The first is that buyer's buyer, 
cannot have an agreement with buyer that's contingent on either the sale of buyer's property or the closing of buyer's property. So buyer's buyer cannot have either a 22B or a 22Q in this transaction between buyer and buyer's buyer. If there is such a contingency, then buyer has to get seller's permission before, before buyer accept buyer's buyer's offer. Second requirement. The agreement between buyer and buyer's buyer can't close sooner than 30 days or longer than 60 days. So the date of closing on the transaction between buyer and buyer's buyer must have a closing date that's not less than 30 days and not more than 60 days. Why? Because the closing date of the transaction between seller and buyer is necessarily determined by the closing date between buyer and buyer's buyer. We, if, we, if we had a closing date on this transaction that was in five days, let's say it was a, con, a cash offer that's going to close in five days, then all of a sudden the seller over here in this transaction is having to close three days after that, eight days later. That's way too short of a time frame for most sellers to be comfortable with. And so the boilerplate form says that the transaction between buyer and buyer's buyer can't close in less than 30 days or in more than 60 days. And the transaction between seller and buyer will always close exactly three days after the closing date of this transaction. So if in this transaction between buyer and buyer's buyer, we're going to have a home sale contingency or a pending sale contingency, that's a 22B or a 22Q, or a closing date that's less than 30 days or more than 60 days, then buyer, you have got to get seller's permission before you enter this agreement with buyer's buyer. If you fail to get that permission before you enter this agreement, then there is a big default provision in Form 22B. In fact, the biggest default provision of all the statewide forms. Form 22B says that if buyer enters a 22B or 22C transaction with buyer's buyer or has a closing date that's less than 30 or more than 60 days, without first getting seller's permission, then buyer, if seller chooses to terminate this, trans this transaction, then seller has the unfettered right to terminate this transaction, holding buyer in default and recovering the earnest money if that's the seller's remedy identified on the face of the Form 21 in this transaction between seller and buyer. So buyer, if buy or buyer's broker, if buyer enters an agreement in violation of those, that provision with their buyer without first getting seller's permission, seller has the right to hold your buyer in default of the purchase and sale agreement between seller and buyer and recover the earnest money. Now Form 22B goes on to say that seller, you have this right for three days upon receipt of notice from buyer that buyer has sold buyer's property, you have three days to terminate the agreement on this basis. And if seller fails to terminate the agreement within those three days, then the defect in, in buyer's failure to get seller's permission, that defect is cured or it goes away. It no longer exists. So seller, if you want to terminate, you got to do it in three days upon getting notice. Okay, I just referenced seller getting notice of buyer's sale. This is the last thing we're going to cover in this part of the video series. Buyer brokers, when your buyer sells buyer's property, buyer is required to immediately, they've actually got two days, but get this done as quickly as you can, buyer has two days to deliver notice to seller that buyer has sold buyer's contingent sale property. Use a Form 90K to deliver that notice, and the Form 90K must include the entire purchase and sale agreement between buyer and buyer's buyer. If buyer has violated the, re the, the requirements of the transaction between seller and buyer, in the terms of the agreement between buyer's buyer, it's going to be revealed in this process because buyer brokers, you have got to give a full copy of this transaction to the seller in this transaction within two days of mutual acceptance. If buyer broker fails to do that, buyer is in default, again, of this transaction between seller and buyer. The notice of the sale has to be delivered.
And with delivery of that notice, the home sale contingent buyer has satisfied the home sale contingency. Okay, that's where we're leaving this today. We're going to pick up at the next video on the concept of buyer's waiver of the home sale contingency. If you have questions in the meantime on this topic or, or any other, send an email to me, legalhotline at warealtor.org. Thank you for being a Washington Realtors member.